It's a great privilege to be here with some of this country's most passionate change makers and some people whom I greatly admire, like Ms. Maria Ressa, Ashley Gutierrez, and Ato Maralio, to share what I believe is one of this country's best kept secrets, which has the potential to save our environment from fossil fuel, create the largest investment opportunity since the Industrial Revolution, growing the power industry by five times, and not only coming at zero cost, but saving this country 100 billion pesos per year, lowering electricity prices to globally competitive levels. This new industrial revolution requires no new technology, no government regulation, nothing that isn't already available today. The only thing missing for it is your help in raising awareness of this previously held secret. And the big secret is this. Contrary to what we have been told, contrary to what we know, solar energy is already cheaper than coal, and even with batteries, can already replace all diesel and gas in this country today. While coal is in decline around the world, in every market where there is a competitive bidding without subsidies in head-to-head -head competition between coal and renewable energy, solar is beating coal. Earlier this year, the record was broken at around four US dollar cents per kilowatt hour, or two pesos per kilowatt hour. And just last week, in a bidding in Dubai, two and a half US dollar cents, close to one peso per kilowatt hour was achieved. This is happening in other markets like the US, India, Chile, Mexico, and Peru. It is not the result of subsidies. It is not the result of these governments wanting clean energy, but wanting cheap energy. Solar has already proven that it is cheaper than coal. You even have the likes of the Indian energy minister saying the same and coal developers in other countries now replacing what would have been sites for coal-fueled power plants instead with solar farms. So the question is, why is this the case in other countries, but very far from what we've been led to believe here in the Philippines? That's doubly ironic considering that according to Deutsche Bank, the Philippines is one of the best markets in the world where solar is already competitive with fossil fuel. Not because we can achieve the same record low costs. Land is more expensive here. There is slightly less sun and interest rates are higher. But because of the most important factor that fossil fuel generation rates are not very cheap in this country at all. What is an unfortunate fact for all these previous years is in fact a blessing in disguise because the Philippines according to Deutsche Bank's studies, is the place where solar is already the most competitive compared to fossil fuel. Again, the question is, why is this so different from what we've been led to believe? And the answer is no different from why we have the slowest internet, worst traffic, and generally most expensive electricity in this country. Not because that's how things have to be, but because the market in the Philippines is inefficient, but it doesn't have to be. We can change it. We can make all this better. And this is at odds with the fact that solar has been subsidized in the Philippines up until earlier this year, a feed-in tariff that successfully jump-started the industry. Back in 2013 when this was announced, there was only four megawatts of solar in the Philippines. And today, there is close to 1,000 megawatts. While this subsidy was necessary, to create economies of scale. Now that solar is already a thriving business in the Philippines, the industry should learn to grow up and mature, be competitive in head-to-head -head competition without subsidies, because only then can the aims of phasing out fossil fuel really be achieved at scale. And this has already happened. Solar panel costs globally have decreased 90% in the last six years. 
The rates of solar projects are now half of what they were when the government approved the solar feed-in tariff subsidy a few years ago. Economies of scale in the Philippines has also helped that happen. But moreover, vertical integration. Whereas before, middlemen, agents, subcontractors, foreign suppliers and such crowded this market with the most expensive rates according to other countries. The Philippines now is forced to lower solar panel costs because developers have to be more efficient. My company, for example, is now not just developing its own solar projects and not just constructing them in-house. We have a solar panel factory that will start operations in Tanawan, Batangas by December of this year, helping us further lower costs to one half of what was previously the rate for solar in the Philippines. Add that to the fact that now that there are no longer subsidies that give perverse incentives to rush the construction of projects, when you have time to optimize, you can actually work on further lowering those costs and using the best technology that was previously not used because projects were incentivized to finish in a very, very tight timeline. And lastly, and I think most like essentially to all this, when you have subsidies, you don't give people an incentive to work towards lower costs. When you don't have subsidies, necessity becomes the mother of invention, and people find ways to make solar become cost competitive against fossil fuel. So the next question that people will ask is, yes, it's cheaper than coal, but is it not unreliable? Is it not only in the daytime and intermittent at that? And here we should learn the lesson from the dramatic decrease in solar panel prices. Battery costs are now falling at a similar rate to how solar costs fell in the last decade. In 2010, they were $1,000 a kilowatt hour. Today, they are $300 a kilowatt hour. And if Elon Musk's targets hold true, by 2020, we'll be at around $100 per kilowatt hour. Such that the cost of adding batteries to a solar system would only be an additional one to one and a half pesos per kilowatt hour. All of this is helped by the growth in the global electric vehicle industry, which is increasing scale. Every doubling in scale is resulting in a 20% decrease in costs. So with three more doublings, we will hit that close to $100 per kilowatt hour level. And at that level, all gas and diesel in the Philippines should absolutely already be phased out, if not already today. Apart from all that evidence, the skeptics will still say that for one reason or the other, it works in other countries, but won't work here. That's a very easy argument to disprove. Need not look any further than the fact that there are already projects in the Philippines that are selling at rates lower than what utilities provide and lower than wholesale prices for fossil fuel. We have, for example, an installation on the rooftop of SM Mall of Asia that's selling power to the mall at a fixed discount of 30% to whatever Meralco is charging SM. If Meralco is charging SM 7 pesos per kilowatt hour, we'll charge them 490. And likewise, if prices decrease. That, if anything, should end the discussion between solar versus fossil fuel, especially because if you're putting things on, on rooftops, you're not just saving on the generation charge. You're saving on transmission, distribution, and all the other fees that are variable costs that are saved when you reduce your electricity consumption. A great reason to foster more rooftop solar power. But I believe that the biggest challenge is going to be how we can make this work with batteries at a utility scale for solar farms. Because that's how most of our electricity is still transmitted, through transmission lines and not on rooftops. Which is why we are now starting construction on a solar farm in Concepcion, Tarlac, that will sell power at a cheaper rate than diesel and gas. It'll be finished by the early part of 2017 and hopefully end the debate between the viability of solar power versus fossil fuel once and for all, and hopefully end any plans for new fossil fuel generation in this country. So the question is, if all of this does happen, what should the traditional power industry do? The first lesson that should be learned is not to try and fight technological disruption. 
It is as futile as taxi companies trying to stop Uber. It is as futile as landline companies trying to stop the ascent of mobile telephony. What instead those landline companies did, those that survived at least, was pivoted to be part of that disruption themselves. The second thing they should do is try and reduce the number of fossil fuel plants being built in this country. Because the more of these future stranded assets are built, the more legacy infrastructure that we'll have our hands on, that we'll have to find out what to do with when it does be happen that there's all this cheap, low-cost solar power flooding the market. Rather than having an oversupply of coal and other fossil fuel, coal companies themselves should discourage others from building those same types of plants. And third, all diesel and gas in these Philippines should be shut off as soon as these solar power plants come online. Because there is a limited amount of space for solar farms in this country. The more capacity is dedicated to more expensive diesel and gas, the more solar has to compete against the more inexpensive fossil fuel, which is coal. So if we eliminate diesel and gas from this country, we'll be able to further lower costs and have a smoother transition into this renewable energy future. But the other thing that should be done is for all these same power companies now racing into fossil fuel to consider that perhaps this is a better way for us to do business. First, because it's disruption proof. It's a new technology and isn't prone to regulatory intervention due to in carbon emissions, due to all of these issues attendant to coal-powered generation. Secondly, solar panels in themselves are low maintenance, have uh, no moving parts, no fuel supply, are a much more predictable cash flow source than fossil fuel. And thirdly, and most importantly, this is something that I think should be better appreciated. If you were to replace one megawatt of demand with solar panels, with batteries, that would require four to five times as much installed capacity as one megawatt of coal. A megawatt of coal works for 20 to 24 hours a day. A megawatt of solar for four, so you'll need four to five megawatts to replace one megawatt of coal. That grows the size of this industry, satisfying the wants of businesses while lowering costs because solar costs with battery costs are already there for gas and diesel and will be there for fossil fuel uh, in, in coal. And moreover, everyone in this country will win. The environment will be protected. Electricity prices can decrease, especially if global fossil fuel prices go back to their historical norms, by 50 to 100 billion pesos a year. And power companies will have a larger market in which to build plants. The only one who will lose will be fossil fuel exporters, companies and countries that are currently mining coal and oil, of which the Philippines is not significantly one. Anyone who loves this country should fight for this. Any self-interested power company should be in favor of this too. The only thing that is missing is awareness. And before these companies build more fossil fuel plants, they should take heed of the fact that in all these other countries, like the US and India, solar is now displacing more expensive generation. And I think it's important to put this on a global context. Because electricity prices are so much more expensive here than in other countries, the Philippines can become, with batteries, the first majority solar-powered market in the world. That will make the Philippines, for the first time ever, the global pioneer in a new technology that will one day supply the majority of the world's energy mix and make Filipinos innovators on a world stage. It will make us a country that is no longer just a middle-income developing nation, but one that is a technology leader and something that I think all Filipinos will one day be proud to hear about. This is far removed from what many believe is the status quo in the power industry where solar is expensive. But just like the spread of mobile displacing landlines over the past decade, this will just shock and surprise people in this industry in the years to come. And history will remember these years to be the turning points for those that follow this advice that will have survived and those that did not to become relegated to the pages of history. So in the next few years, it's important for 
everyone in the power industry to think, what side of history will we be on? And because everything that is necessary for this to happen is already here, the only thing missing then is your help to raise awareness of this so that the days of solar will begin and fossil fuel will come to an end. Thank you.